Good morning, everybody. This is Tish. She's doing what you do with Miss Tish. I am out in my garden this morning, subdivision garden. I am on a task. I have a couple things I have to do. I have to plant my bean seeds. Um, this is probably be a continuation or maybe not a video. I'm not sure yet. But today's task is this morning task uh, for the couple hours or a few hours I have is to get these tomato buckets ready. Plant as much tomatoes as I can. Get these trellises um, right. Get the string out. Get them old tomato things down, which they should have been already down. Clean those buckets out. Get them planted in and get the beans in. Um, and that's what uh, my goal is today to get that main thing done. And then maybe get some straw into my bins, the things that don't have straw, and clean up if I have time provide for bells for that if not i have to take care of that tomorrow so i'll take you along and let you um see what i'm doing right now you might hear some my bible reading going on but it's going to be awesome and i'm not going to be talking much but just letting you see okay be blessed and while Jeremiah dictated all the words the Lord had spoken to him, Barak wrote them on the scroll. Then Jeremiah told Barak to take them. Read them to all the people of Judah who come in from their towns. Perhaps they will bring their petition before the Lord, and will all turn from their wicked ways, for the anger and wrath pronounced against this people by the Lord are great. Barak, son of Neriah, did everything Jeremiah the prophet told him to do. At the Lord's temple, he read the words of the Lord from the scroll. In the ninth month of the fifth year of Jehoiakim, Shechem heard all the words of the Lord from the scroll. He went down to the secretary's room of the royal palace, where all the officials were sitting. Elishama, the secretary, Elaine, son of Shemaiah, El Nathan, son of Akbor, Jemariah, son of Jacob, Zedekiah, son of Hananiah, and all the other officials. After Micaiah told them everything he had heard directly from the scroll, all the officials sent Jeshua, son of Nebuchadnezzar, the son of Shalabiah, the son of Cushan, to say to him, Bring the scroll in which you have read to the people of Ka. So Baron, son of Nebuchadnezzar, went to them with the scroll in his hand. They said to him, Sit down, please, and read it to us. So Barak read it to them. When they heard all these words, they looked at each other in fear and said to them, We must report all these words to the king. Then they asked them, Tell us, how did you come to write all this? Did Jeremiah dictate it? Yes, Barak replied. He dictated all these words to me, and I wrote them in ink on the scroll. Then the officials said to Barak, You and Jeremiah, go and hide. Don't let anyone know who you are. After they put the scroll in the room of Elishima, the secretary, they went to the king in the courtyard and reported everything to him. The king sent Jeshua, nor did they tear their clothes. Even though El Nathan, Gilead, and Jeremiah urged the king not to burn the scroll, he would not listen. Instead, the king commanded Jeremiah, a son of the king, Zerah, son of Azrael, and Shelemiah, son of Abdul, to arrest Barak the scribe and Jeremiah the prophet. But the Lord had hidden them. After the king burned the scroll containing the words that Barak had written at Jeremiah's dictation, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Take another scroll and write on it all the words that were on the first scroll, which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, burned up. Also tell Jehoiakim, king of Judah, this is what the Lord says. He burned that scroll and said, Why did you write on it that the king of Babylon would certainly come and destroy this land, and wipe from it both people and animals? Therefore, this is what the Lord says about Jehoiakim, king of Judah. He will have no one to sit on the throne of David. 
this body will be thrown out and exposed to me by day and the frost by night. I will punish him and his children and his attendants for their wickedness. I will bring on them and those living in Jerusalem and the people of Judah every disaster I pronounced against them because they have not listened. So Jeremiah took another scroll and gave it to the scribe of Pharaoh, son of Uriah. And as Jeremiah dictated, Pharaoh wrote on it all the words of the scroll that before him, King of Judah, turned to the fire. And many similar words were added to him. Instead of fire, son of Josiah was made king of Judah by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He reigned in place of Jehovah. Son of the Lord King. Neither he nor his attendants, nor the people of the land, paid any attention to the word the Lord had spoken through Jeremiah the prophet. This is what the Lord says. Do not deceive yourselves to God. So Jeremiah remained in the courtyard of the God. Shepherd Tom, son of Matthew, Gedaliah, son of people, son of Jeremiah, and Pasha, son of Mount Pasha, heard what Jeremiah was telling all the people when he said, This is what the Lord says. Whoever stays in this city will die by the sword, but in the poor cave. But whoever goes over to the Babylonians will live. They will escape with their lives. They will live. And this is what the Lord says. This city will certainly be given into the hands of the army of the king of Babylon, who will capture it. Then the officials said to the king, This man should be put to death. He is discouraging the soldiers who are left in this city, as well as all the people, by the things he is saying to them. This man is not seeking the good of these people, but their ruin. He is in your hands, King Zedekiah answered. The king can do nothing to you. So they took Jeremiah and put him into the system of Mount Pacha, the king's son, who was in the courtyard of the guard. They did not swore to his secretly to Surely, the Lord knows he has given us bread, and we will kill you and you will to those who seek you. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, This is what the Lord God Almighty the God of Israel says, If you surrender to the officers of the king of Babylon, your life will be spared, and this city will not be burned down. You and your family will live. But if you will not surrender to the officers of the king of Babylon, this city will be given into the hands of the Babylonians, and they will burn it down. You yourself will not escape from them. King Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, I'm afraid the Jews have gone over to the Babylonians, and the Babylonians may hand me over to them and they will mistreat me. They will not hand you over. Jeremiah replied, Obey the law by doing what I tell you. Then it will go well with you when your life will be spared. And if you refuse to surrender, this is what the Lord has revealed to me. All the women left in the palace of the king of Judah will be drawn out to the officials of the king of Babylon. And those women will say to you, they misled you and overcame you, those trusted friends of yours. Your feet are sunk in the mud. Your friends are supposed to die. All the officials did come to Jeremiah and told them everything the king had wanted to say. So they said to the Lord, for no one had heard his conversation with the king. And by way of the king's God, through the gate, Now, that 
Almighty, the God of Israel, says, I am about to bring peace upon you. position around Babylon. All you who draw the bow, shoot at her. Spear no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. Shout against her on every side. She surrenders, her towers fall, her walls are torn down. Since this is the vengeance of the Lord, take vengeance on her. Do to her as she has done to others. Cut off from Babylon the sowers and the reapers with their sickles and heart. Israel is a scattered flock that lions have chased away. The first to devour was Syria. The last to crush their bones was Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Therefore, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. I will punish the king of Babylon and his land. The king of Assyria. But I will bring Israel back to their own hearts, and they will graze on cargo and nation. Their appetite will be satisfied on the hill of the tribe of In those days, at that time, declares the Lord, search will be made for Israel's guilt, but there will be none. For the sins of Judah, but none will be found. Why, for years of the remnant I spare, attack the land of Merathayim and those who live in Pekon. Pursue, kill, and completely destroy them, declares the Lord. Do everything I have commanded you. The noise of battle is in the land, the noise of great destruction. How broken and shattered is the hammer of the whole world. How desolate is Babylon among the nations. I 
set a trap for you, Babylon, and you are caught the full You are found and captured because you opposed the Lord. The Lord has opened his arsenal and brought out the weapons of his wrath. For the suffering of Lord the Almighty has work to do in the land of the Babylon. Come against her from afar. Break open her granaries. Pile her up like heaps of grain. Completely destroy her and leave her no remnant. Kill all her young wolves. Let them go down to the slaughter. Woe to them, for their day has come. The time for them to be punished. Listen to the fugitives and refugees from Babylon declaring in Zion how the Lord our God has taken vengeance. Vengeance for his temple. Summon the archers against Babylon, all those who draw the bow and camp all around her. Let no one escape. Repay her for her deeds. Do to her as she has done. For she has defied the Lord, the Holy One of Israel. But therefore, her young men will fall in the streets. All her soldiers will be silenced in that day, declares the Lord. See, I am against you, you arrogant one, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. For your day has come, the time for you to be punished. The arrogant one will stumble and fall, and no one will help her out. I will kindle a fire in her town that will consume all who are around her. This is what the Lord Almighty says. The people of Israel are oppressed, and the people of Judah as well. All their captors hold them fast, refusing to let them go. Yet their Redeemer is strong. The Lord Almighty is his name. He will vigorously defend their cause so that he may bring rest to their land. But unrest to those who live in Babylon. A sword against the Babylonians, declares the Lord. Against those who live in Babylon and against her officials and wise counselors. A sword against her false prophets. They will become fools. A sword against her warriors, they will be filled with terror. A sword against her horses and chariots, and all the foreigners in her ranks, they will become weaklings. A sword against her treasures, they will be plundered. A drought on her waters, they will dry up, for it is a land of idols. Idols that will go mad with terror. So desert creatures and hyenas will live there, and there the hour will grab. It will never again be a So that is the continuation of that is me planting and getting my <clears throat> tomato area ready. Um, I do have um, about six, let me see, two, four, four, six, eight. Um, no, four, eight, twelve. Sixteen buckets over here. I might put a couple more, but so far, sixteen buckets have to be filled in with tomatoes. Right now, this row that I'm doing right now is all indeterminate tomatoes. Excuse the sound in the background. That's my Bible reading. Um, anyway, right now is um, I have did two, and the way I'm doing this is how. Each one of these rows is going to be done. Except the last row is going to be um, determinant tomatoes. I will have my romas in those. So I want to have at least eight um, buckets of aroma. So I have to go and get maybe four more buckets. And I will be able to place them right beside, um, maybe in between um, the other rows to get some more of those romas done. Maybe. I'll see what I'm going to do because I have a whole lot of tomatoes I have to give away. Or I'm gonna have to find somewhere to plant them. So these are indeterminate, ranging from beef steak, cherry, long cherry, purple Cherokee, and um, mushroom basket. So these are all indeterminate. So they will grow up tall on this trellis. I will show you what kind of trellis um, weaving I'm going to do to connect my um, my um, tomatoes. 
I got two different things I want to make sure they sturdy. And I'm going to reinforce these. These are real good now. I did, you see that I did put some um, crates that I had from over here. But now I got these platforms inside of these um, areas. So now they're not on the wood that was um, deteriorating and causing bugs and all kinds of, you know, stuff that's going to eat on that wood. I can throw that away. Um, that wood can go in the forest and get um, um, decomposed, you know, um, eventually will go down. So I'm going to throw that over there with the rest of the um, scraps I did. So each one of the rows is going to be done, and that's what we'll be working on. And I hope you enjoyed the video so far. Um, and so the next thing I'll be doing on this video is I'll be planting my beans, and I'll show you what I do from there. Okay, stay tuned.